Hi, uh, good afternoon. So uh, we are going to speak on uh, lots of things uh, on ARL today. It will be kind of an interview, uh, sorry, it will be kind of a learning session for me uh, uh, from Prathamesh. And we'll try to explore lot of, lots of things uh, which are not kind of exposed, exposed through active record. So I'm Prathamesh, sorry. <laughs> I'm okay. Vipul. I'm Prathamesh. Yeah. And <laughs> I'm so sorry. This yeah. was this was not supposed to be the joke. <laughs> so we uh, actually uh, we work at a we work together at a consultancy named as Big Binary and it's based out of uh, Miami. And we have we are from Pune, uh, where we work remotely with the consultancy over there. And we got to know each other a lot uh, from Rails uh, while working on uh, Rails code, code base, actually. So yeah, uh, some of the fault, like uh, why I read that was, uh, it, it has been quite hectic uh, getting over here and I could not get, get sleep last, uh, last night. And we are currently staying at this hostel uh, named as Plot. And yeah, it, it's been quite hectic. Yeah. So Vipul, what are you working on these days? Okay, this is actually the uh, conversation part, so, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what are you working on these days? Uh, you see, I'm working on a pretty hot startup, which is like Backpackers LLC. And yeah. I've been traveling to a lot of places recently uh, where I find, where I've made a lot of, uh, where I've made a lot of friends from hostels and their backpackers, and I wanted to help them out in some way. So I've, I'm working on this app, uh, which which has basic basic functionalities and it, it helps them out in like maybe task management or finding great locations, finding food centers or finding cheap hostels and hotels. Looks good. Yeah, and you know it has a very special feature also like it can it can help you out to find lost bags. So oh, wow. yeah, <laughs> and special mention over here like you should go over to this handle and start following this because it needs more followers. And. <laughs> Yeah, and, and we already have uh, pretty happy customers right now who use our uh, you, who use our app, and yeah, this is one of the one of the features like which help them to find the bag. So just to give Rathamesh an overview, like I'm working on mm -hmm. pretty hardcore stuff, and some of the things that I work on, like uh, I have this traveler model over here, which is encapsulates data from about the traveler. Uh, something. Well, uh, I have tasks which handles information for tasks, locations for finding different okay. information about locations, and mm -hmm. bookings associated with the customers, and things like that. Cool, looks good. And you know what? It's like it's, it's the current hotness, and I have like ten active users right now. Wow! And I just launched it last. <laughs> yeah, I launched it last week, and I actually have ten active users. So you a you actually can go at uh, backpackers.herokuapp.com and you can sign up yourself, uh, and it's actual live app. And so while I was working, like I have 10 actual users. So performance was the most important thing for me. Like, you know, 10 active users, you don't get that much these days. So yeah. So that's why like I'm I was very pretty much into hardcore SQL stuff. So I'm like, everything that you can't get through Active Record, I would I try to do it through raw SQL because okay. you know, actual power of database, it should, it's it's pretty important. So yeah, I used a lot of raw SQL. And it was, you know. I'm into, I'm a, I'm a lot into uh, SQL, so yeah, it's, it's pretty simple for me. Cool. But you know what, sometimes, uh, I don't know, it's sometimes it's pretty hard for me uh, using it in active record. Okay. So yeah, so like, this is an example that I was working on, which uh, tries to, it, what it does is it's, it's trying to find out cuisine, uh, it, uh, it, so for my friends, it tries to find out food or places where uh, we can find Indian cuisine. And what it tries to do is it's using I like over here because you know, uh, I didn't like the where clauses and things like that and I wanted to do raw SQL, so yeah. I'm doing pretty hardcore stuff over here. Oh, you have heard of Errol? Uh, yeah, I've heard of it, but I didn't use because you know, hardcore raw SQL stuff. Okay, <laughs> so let me tell you how we can improve this query using Errol. Okay. So Errol is actually a SQL generator for Ruby it can generate all kinds of complex SQL in an object-oriented way. You don't have to write raw SQL for that. And it is used by Active Record internally, uh, but it has all the other features which are not exposed by default by Active Record API. So in your scenario, Errol okay. can help you. So let's How's start. That? 
Yeah. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to first grab the underlying <coughs> error object. Okay. Every active record uh, ob model will have this method error table, and using which we we can grab the underlying error object. Okay. So once and we got that why, object, why do you have this table error table thing? Uh, because it can give you access to the underlying error object, and you can call error methods on that. Otherwise, okay. they are not exposed directly through Active Record API. So once you have got that object, you can call methods like this, where you are accessing the cuisine attribute, and you are calling matches any, which is like it is doing the same stuff that you did uh, by writing raw SQL, I like and or. So this is the error thing that you're speaking about. Uh, yeah, right. This is the error predicate method. Uh, so you're matching uh, your cuisine attribute over your arguments, and you can pass any number of arguments there. So um, it has generated the or clause for you because you are doing matches any. Okay. And as you're most probably you are using PostgreSQL, so it has generated the I like also. You don't have to remember that I like. So it will, yeah. it is database agnostic. This looks interesting. Yeah. So let me ask you one more question. Oh, don't don't look at the slide. Sorry. Okay, so let, so let me ask you one more question. Can your app handle this condition where you want Indian food also, but you want vegetarian Indian food? Yeah, so whatever, like my app is the current hotness, so I have current, uh, like whatever, this is like pretty basic <laughs> stuff that my app uh, is able to do. So what I'm basically doing is, you know, I use the I like, so I'm using just not I like over here, and it's filtering out all the results for okay. non-veg food. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's like, you know, whatever. But Errol can help you in this also. So as it has matches, it also has does not match. So it can generate negative predicates also. And using okay. that, you don't have to write that not I, I like, raw SQL. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, and not just this. It has all this full list of predicates. You can do lots of stuff here. You can uh, compare on arrays. You can do uh, greater than, less than, greater than, equal to, less than, equal to. You can do lots of predicates. Looks interesting. Yeah, and it is very simple. You don't have to do much for this. Uh, wait, but this is like pretty basic stuff. I mean, it's possible to do it in Ruby also, like equals to and stuff like that. I mean, it's not 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 so hard. Can Arial do like kind of hardcore stuff that I'm doing over here? Because like I'm into raw SQL, so I'm doing an intersect over here. Is it possible to do that? Yes, it is also possible. So. I think what we will have to do here is we will have to break this complex query in, into different parts, and Errol can easily do that. Uh, would you like me to explain what, is, what this is doing? Yeah. So it's trying to, uh, what this is doing is it, it is trying to uh, find all the locations with bookings for a book, uh, I mean, whichever location which has a booking, and then on top of that it is going to find locations, uh, I mean, it is going to find the result of uh, the ratings which are, uh, for locations which are greater than three. Okay. And that's why I'm using intersect over here. OK. So you, you want to combine the result of both the subqueries? Exactly. Right. So let's start with your booking query. The rating should be more than three, right? Yeah. So we, ca we can use our greater than predicate to generate this clause. Mm -hmm. And let's just keep it as it is. We will use it later. So let's move next. Now we want to join. So here we will not join using active record way. Uh, when you are joining using active record, active record will take care of matching the primary keys and foreign keys automatically. Oh. But as you are doing error way, you, you have to go in steps. So first you pass the review tables error object, then you specify on which condition you want to join. So you specify that you want to join uh, reviews location ID column. It should be equal to location's primary key. And now you can specify one more extra join condition. So this is not possible by default in active record. You have to write SQL for that. Uh, but here you can specify the extra join condition where we are using that our existing clause. And now once we have generated this uh, join condition, now we want to select something from it. So as Errol is based on relational algebra, it has some relational algebra terms. So select in SQL is similar to project in Errol. So you are projecting star, Errol dot star, which gets converted into SQL literal. Yeah, I know about the star. The it's like select star. Yeah. yeah you know SQL. <laughs> OK. And the join method is not just inner join. So if you want to do outer joins in uh, active record, it's not possible by default. But here, error join method can take a second argument. By default, it will be inner join always. But you can pass outer join, you can pass right outer join, full outer join, and it will do those joins also. So 
Joints are very simple using ARL. Wait, we were not discussing on joints. Please okay, focus. Okay, let's come back. Let's come yeah, back. We were speaking about intersect. Yeah. I, I don't see that over there. Okay. So now we have got our two queries, sub queries, and now we want to just do the final step. Okay. And let's do that. It's very simple. So just combine them using Whoa. intersect. You're done. That looks simple. So here I'm using join, which is from ARL, and then I'm doing joints, which is from active record. Right. And it works because of ARL, actually. So how it works is the intersect method is defined in ARL select manager. So you want the earlier clause. Uh, the result, you can chain on that clause. And the intersect method works in this way that you can pass any object to it which responds to AST. And here, location.joins bookings responds to AST. So ARL will convert this into its AST and will apply the intersect method on both nodes. That looks so, interesting. Yeah, you get the same query back. Wow, and it's, it's much cleaner than what I had written, like the raw SQL stuff. And it's like, exactly, exactly. It looks good. Yeah. And it's just ju not just uh, intersect, you can do unions also. You can do accept clauses also. So you can combine your subqueries in all possible ways. I mean, I don't want to use those, but yeah, fine, whatever. OK. Uh, fine, I mean, that's, that's OK. It's just basic intersect that you're using, but you're, you're not, not convinced yet? I'm, I'm using pretty hardcore stuff that I told you. Okay. So here's one, one other thing, like I'm using, uh, adjust, I'm using this table as an adjacency list and mm -hmm. what it's trying to do is it is having a, I'm trying to do, uh, provide a self join over here, like the, there's a parent location, there may be locations and sub locations. Okay. And I'm doing this, you, you know, using hardcore raw SQL stuff, like, you know, in a join on the same table and okay. using the alias and things like that. And I'm, I don't think that, okay, this is possible through ARL. Well, it is also possible through ARL. So wow. let's see that. The first thing that we want to do is we want to create alias on our existing table, and it's just a simple method, alias. You call that method and you get alias for your table. Okay. So we created the alias for nearby locations. Now let's do the join. So in previous case, we joined on a review table, mm -hmm. but here we will join on our own alias. So location will join on nearby locations, and then you can just specify your join condition as we did last time. And again, you can pass the extra and condition. Okay. And what is this join sources that I'm seeing over here? Yeah, so the, uh, if you want to pass this to active records joins method, you want the internal join object. Okay. And this join sources, what it does is, it, it gets that internal object. The object is now pluggable, so you can pick it up, plug it into joins method, you get your active record uh, relation object back. Okay, something like this, what you're doing over here. Yeah, something like this. So uh, you combine the result, pass it to active record joins method, okay. and you get the same SQL. But notice the difference. Uh, here you are getting the table name as locations2, which is generated ah. by error. The alias one? Right. So you don't have to uh, like make sure that you're using uh, unique names. Errol will do that for you. Nice. Again, I don't have to say anything. I think it's getting quite bored, boring using this slide again and again. Okay. <laughs> but anyway. So, yeah, <clears throat> this is all fine. This is all uh, raw SQL stuff. But yeah, you know, I'm using pretty uh, secure. I'm, I mean, I have 10 users, so I mm -hmm. needed to make it super secure. So I'm using like hardcore, again, database stuff. I didn't want to do the Ruby stuff because I, I believe on database. So I'm using this thing, uh, I'm using these functions like, you know, PGSIM encrypt, which is, I mean, di I'm di trying to directly encrypt data directly from the database. Okay. So, yeah, I have these set and get methods, which are uh, using, getting the key and value, they are directly encrypted data from database and mm -hmm. this associating it to that particular record. And you can see over here, this is yeah, how you're just it, yeah, running that query. Executing it. And, you know, this is pretty hardcore. I don't think ARL will be possible. I mean, I don't see why ARL should come into this picture. Okay. So ARL has an answer to this also. Okay. It has a concept of name functions. So what name functions are, they are like, they will act as a wrapper, Ruby wrapper for your SQL functions. So you just pass oh. the database function name and its arguments, and then you will get a name function back, which you can use in your select queries just like you use your normal attributes. So yeah, ARL can help you in this also. And I see Whatever. one more use case. What, you're, what are you trying to do here? Ah, uh, see again, hardcore SQL stuff. I'm using coalesce over here, like, I mean, some, some of the time uh, my users want to sort 
uh, sort tasks based okay. on when they were completed. And sometimes the completed at time that I have over here, it may not be present over here. Mm -hmm. So instead of that, I'll be uh, sorting on created at. That's why I'm using coalesce. Okay. So you can use name functions here also. Let me show you. Okay. So just like previous, we defined a name function for order criteria. And we can pass that to our order clause. And it will generate the same query. So name functions can be used in these scenarios. You don't, just don't have to rely on select. You can use it in multiple cases. Depends on what function you want to use. Very interesting. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this has been quite informative. And you know what? I'm going to try and uh, hack into my app and start using this little stuff. And it, it was pretty nice. OK. So yeah. let's you just. Give me a summary yeah. for it? Right. So let's just summarize all the things that we discussed. Uh, we discussed complex predicates. You can do all kinds of positive stuff, negative stuff. You can yeah, generate them. You can chain them. Then combinations. You can generate your subqueries. You can combine them using intersect, union, accept, all kinds of possible combinations. And joins. Joins. Do, you can do inner joins, self joins. You can do outer joins. OK. All kinds of possible possibility. It's possible. Cool. And then the last part that what we seen was you can use ARL with active record. Right. So uh, you can leverage the existing active records features with the power of ARL. Man, this was quite informative. And thanks, thanks for all, uh, I mean, giving, giving an idea of whatever, whatever I'm mean, able to use uh, through ARL. Don't thank me, actually. Thank these people. So uh, Nick Kellen originally wrote ARL. Then Brian and Emilio, they integrated it into Rails in Summer of Code. And Aaron and uh, Ernie for adding new features, maintaining, and everything. Thanks. Can we have a clap for them? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, talk was short because there was tea break, so. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. Uh, there's one other thing that. Yeah, the yeah. conversation is over, actually. So there was one another thing that we wanted to include, which was uh, Windows. Uh, so if you must have used Windows uh, in uh, SQL, it's possible, again, through ARL to use in a pretty neat way. So this is how, actually, uh, ARL works behind the scenes. It, it creates a select manager. And this is, a, this is the engine. I mean, <clears throat> every model that you have, it has an engine associated that is uh, an active record related uh, object. And we can use things like window over here. So it, it, is, uh, it is something that is useful when you want to group together your results. Uh, so this is a running PR right now. I mean, uh, Aaron is over here. Maybe he can take a look. So we'll have this uh, functionality, uh, complete functionality of windows, uh, possible through ARL also. Uh, the code that we have in the slides is available on GitHub at uh, this particular URL. And yeah, the app is live, actually, and you can start using it at backpackers.herokuapp.com. Maybe you can check it out. Yeah, that's it. I'm sorry. <laughs> so the question is, um, are some of these, would you, would you agree that some of these examples are simpler in SQL than in Arial? Uh, I mean, if it was sequ uh, simpler, it would, you would, you would even use active record. You know, I mean, in that terms. But yeah, uh, in lots of cases, it seems simpler in the beginning. But in the end, it's like you are adding on lots of conditions. And it gets quite messy. Uh, there are also other things involved that you need to take care of uh, whether the syntax is correct or you have actual coding correct or things like that, which are given by free for us uh, from a from ARL and active record. So things like that are pretty useful for us. Uh, and again, it's again a thing of like, you are, it helps us out to reuse a lot of things that we are, I mean, we are breaking a, a lot, lot of things into smaller chunks. So imagine a case that you have a, a big query and you're writing it in one single line. Instead of that, you can actually break it down into a separate class and then you can have a pretty decent uh, test. I mean, you can have a pretty de decent test for that particular class. So. And then again, uh, you can combine all these results and use them again in terms of active record, just like we did for joins. Okay. So you leverage what active record does for you. So you can chain on those in uh, other active record ways. So your one clause can be ARL and other clause can be normal active record way, but still you can chain on them. Okay. 
Uh, have you been trying the SQL library and uh, uh, how do you find it comparable to, to RL? So I think we both have not used yeah. SQL. We have not used SQL, but one of the advantage of uh, using RL is that it's under the Rails umbrella. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, <laughs> you can be like Reliable. somewhat sure that, okay, so you, you wanted to, uh, to make uh, inside of Rails, inside of Active Record, so this is because you... Uh, yeah, you, you uh, it's aligned with that, actually. Ah, okay. Th okay, thank you. Thanks, Pratamesh and Vipul. Um, yeah, thanks.